This is a lesson on the change of base formula. The change of base formula is a useful little way to graph and to deal with sort of non-base 10 things. And um, it is based on common logarithms. So in fact, even without the change of base formula, most people are able to derive it just based on what they already know. But um, if we were to consider this example, log of 12 base 3, and you're asked to evaluate it, or at least to simplify it. Now the long way to do this is to put it into exponential form and to recognize that this really means 3 to some exponent is equal to 12. And as soon as you recognize that there is no common base to be found, you have to take the log of both sides. And then apply the power, power law, which I did two steps in one, so this would then be y log 3 is equal to log 12 in base 10. And then when you isolate y, you would get log 12 divided by log 3. Now I'm not going to work this one out any further, that's, that's all I want to see, but if you go back to the original, you might see that the pattern will always be the same. The log of 12 base 3, if you want to go there directly, could be just written as log 12 divided by log 3 and that pattern will always work. So if you were to consider the log of 34 base 5, now you cannot get a common base between 5 and 34, so the long method would be 5 to the y is equal to 34, take the logarithm of both sides, then isolate the y, but it's much quicker just to write this as the log of 34 divide, divided by the log of 5, all in base 10, and then your calculator can handle that. And keep in mind that if you are going to drive this through your calculator, you will need brackets around both 34 and the 5. And you will get 2.19. So that will save you a few keystrokes for that type of problem. So the change of base formula looks like this. The log of c to the base of b is equal to the log of c divided by the log of b. Now you'll note there that I wrote base a. The reason for that is, although that you usually convert things into base 10, because that's what your calculator is programmed with, so it's more practical, but in fact, you can change anything into any other base. So the change of base formula can convert into any base, in the rare case that you would need that. And I will look at an example where we do need that. So express log of x base 8 with base 2. Here is where you would need that. So we're told to use convert this base 8 expression into base 2. And to do so, of course, the change of base formula would be the logical choice. And here it is. This is given on most formula sheets, on the Math 30 Pure formula sheet, for example. It is there. Um, and I want to change this not to base 10, but base 2. So I convert it like this. The log of x base 8 is equal to the log of x base 2 divided by the log of 8 base 2 just followed the instructions. And you would be done normally, except when you take a closer look at the denominator, the log of 8 base 2 is actually equal to 3. 2 to the 3 is equal to 8. So therefore, this expression would be the log of x base 2 divided by 3. And you could write this as 1 third times the log of x base 2 if you wanted to. It's not necessary. Both forms are correct. But you have to be aware that if these showed up in multiple choice questions, your answer may not match the four answers that are there for you, so you may have to do some, some manipulation. And another way to do this one is to use the power pr uh, property in reverse and bring that one-third in. So if you have x to the one-third, you could keep it like that, but more likely they would write that as the cube root of x. So this is um, also the equivalent form. And any of these three or four would be acceptable, the fourth being the one that I just wrote in on the last page. Now that's unusual. Normally you don't want to convert to any other base other than 10. But um, what is important is this change of base formula now allows us to graph logarithmic functions of any base b other than 10. And up till now we haven't really done anything by hand or on the calculator, but it would have had to have been base 10. So if we were asked to sketch the y is equal to the log of x base 2, we would 
hopefully recognize that you can't put that in directly. But with the change of base formula, this could be y is equal to the log of x, close, close up, divided by the log of 2. And on the calculator, that would just get entered as y1 is equal to the log of x divided by log 2. And make sure that you've got a, an appropriate window setting. Probably zoom 6 would be fine on the TI-83. And you're going to get a graph looking somewhat like that. Your your, you might, it might be a little bit different on your calculator graph, but somewhat like that. It looks like a pretty standard logarithmic function. We couldn't do that before, but we can now. Let's try a few more. So let's sketch these following. Number one, y is equal to the log of x plus 2 to the base 1 third. So this is a decreasing function because of the base 1 third. It has also been translated horizontally two units to the left. So on our calculators, with the change of, or prior to that, I should say, we would use the change of base formula, and it would be the log of x plus 2 divided by the log of 1 third, 1 divided by 3. And of course, base 10 makes sense because we want to use this for something. And as long as you've got those brackets closed properly, you should get a graph looking somewhat like this. Keeping in mind that the original graph, before you transformed it, would be looking like this with an x-intercept of 1. We haven't graphed for a while, but the x-intercept would normally be 1. So we just moved that whole thing two units over. But now the calculator did it for us. Let's do another one. y is equal to the log of x minus 1 base 4 plus 2. So here we have two transformations. We're moving this one, one unit to the right. We're moving it two units up. So this would then, with the change of base formula, be the log of x minus 1 divided by the log of 4, and then plus 2 just as a passenger at the end and enter that into your calculator and you should get a graph looking somewhat like this not labeled as the axes wouldn't be labeled as neatly as mine but it should look somewhat similar and what you're probably thinking out there is okay I got this graph can I use it for anything and that's really the big advantage to graphing these ones is that all the graphing features the functions trace zero intersect etc any of them can now be used. So that means that you can solve things algebraic or you solve things graphically that you couldn't before. You could also find x intercepts, y intercepts, or what have you. So let's take a look at that most recent example and go after the x intercept. Now, if you take a look at it, you can see it on my graph, anyways, which is pretty accurate, it's just a little bit over 1. And when you graph this on your calculator, you may find, and it happens a lot with these logarithmic ones, that they don't they don't uh, show it going, it's, it, the graph kind of dies on you. So you have to be careful with that. Sometimes you're a little limited and it can be a little misleading if you didn't know what the graph looked like before. But in any case, I will use the zero function which is the x-intercept. And you have to make sure you set your left boundary somewhere to the left of it. Now even if your graph isn't showing up at that point because you're having an asymptote there, so it might kind of fade away on you or die on you, but put your cursor where it should be, somewhere to the left, and press enter even if you can't actually see it but you know as long as it has x is equal to whatever 0 0.5 something less than 1 you'll be fine and then set your right boundary on the other side and then guess in the middle as close as you can to the x-intercept and then if you press enter, you should get x is equal to 1.0625. So there is our x-intercept. Type of thing you can do. So this is handy, and we will return to this later on when we need it, mostly for checking work and doing a bit of algebra. But that's the idea with these problems. Thank you for your time.